Lady Simone, and I'm honored today to be at the second annual For Real Women International Survivors Gallup Benefit, where the keynote speaker was none other than the Honorable Judge Glenda Hatchett. And here she is, everyone. Welcome, and we thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. I was really honored by your speech. It was inspiring. And I just wanted to ask you, you know, Judge, did you always dream of becoming a famous judge? <laughs> never. In fact, um, I, even after I went to law school, I never intended, I never intended to practice law. I mean, I went to law school just to, to broaden my options. Um, then I got to law school and really wanted to be a litigator, I wanted to be a trial lawyer. Okay. Um, so I went to work um, for a large corporation, um, but never ever, when I was a little girl, I wanted to be a pediatrician. And then when I was in high school, I wanted to be an aeronautical engineer. I was fascinated okay. with space travel, and, and I was going to be an engineer. I just, I, if you had told me that I would end up being a judge of all things, even after I was a lawyer, I always thought I would be a corporate lawyer. But I never dreamed that I'd be doing this, and I surely didn't expect to ever be on television. I mean, that would have been the furthest thing. I mean, there are people who aspire to do this. I didn't aspire to do it. So how did you end up on television? Well, they came to me, and at first I wasn't oh, interested. Wow. I said, I, you know, I don't want to do this, because um, I thought it was kind of silly, and, and uh, <laughs> frankly. And I said, the only way I'll do it is I have to develop it. So that's why my show is very different. Yes, the interventions, and really felt that we had to use the power of television to try to make a difference. And I'm very proud of, of what we've been able to do on the show. Yes, I'm, I'm proud of the show as well, in terms of the, you know, the hope and the direction that you bring to these young women's lives. Um, President Obama is all for change, oh, yes. you know. Do you uh, have any advice that, that you would give parents and Americans, or people really, that would help steer the youth in the right direction? Well, I think we have to be really consistent. I mean, that's just one of the major problems I've seen with parents. Um, is that they say one thing and they don't enforce it. And that's why I wrote the book, Say What You Mean and Mean What You Say. If you say 9 o'clock curfew, right. then it's 9 o'clock. If you say you expect certain things from your kids, you want them to do chores, you expect them to act responsibly, you expect them to get good grades, and they don't do it and there's no consequence to that, right? then what's the point? And I had a parent say to me once, well, Judge, if I did everything you said in the book, my kid wouldn't like me. And I'm like, that's the problem. You're not here to be her best friend. That's why exactly. she's got Maya and Shanika and <laughs> Ashley and, you know. Um, that's right. And I don't mean for that to be an adversarial role. Right. I mean, I think you should have a really positive role. Right. But you also should be clear that you are the parent mm -hmm. and you are not to try to make them always happy. If right. you know that something is wrong, then you should draw the line. I see. Uh, and that's a real problem with too many parents. They forget really what their responsibility is. Okay. Um, so are you saying that it's not good to be like a friend? What I'm you saying, have to really I, be a parent. You have to be a parent. Friendship. You have, it, and that and and I have, I think, a wonderful relationship with both of my sons. Okay. But I will tell you, at the end of the day, I have to be their parent first. And, and we had a, had a wonderful kind of teamwork and everybody kind of looking out for everybody else. But there was only one captain of this team. So That's I was a single right. mama most of, their, most of their lives. Really? I was a single mother. Oh my goodness. And so I was in charge. And they understood that. Now we talked about things. We had a great time together. Uh, their friends love coming to our house all the time. But at the end of the day, no meant no. And I say right. that in my book. Parents need to understand that when you say no, it is no today and tomorrow. Not like, oh, well, Judge, I changed my mind because they kept asking me and I got tired of them asking me. So I gave in. Why? You know, right. and, that's, and that's where I think that too many parents get off the track. I'm not saying that there has to be like a bad right. relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you cannot try to please your children. Right. You cannot try to buy their affection. Can't give them money for an iPod when they brought home horrible grades or they broke curfew. You know, you've got to send consistent messages to our children. Okay. Kid said, one kid said, 
Um, my mother said he won't go to school. And I said, he's got a cell phone in his pocket. And he's wearing <laughs> shoes, tennis shoes that, you know, cost $200. Why? I see. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's inspiring to me as a single mother. My husband died. And um, it's inspiring to me that, you know, you made it and you're a famous judge on television <laughs> and you're an author. You're so accomplished. So, you know, just you, your whole energy, your whole aura, just by you being you, you send us such a great message of inspiration, encouragement to mothers and fathers, really, everywhere, internationally. Um, do you think that there's a crisis in the land in America when it comes to our youth right I now? I do. I absolutely do. And, it, and we can do better by our children. We as parents can do better. We as a society can do better. I am so thrilled that Barack Obama is our new president because Barack gets it. We've got to put money, more money into education. Yes. We've got to put money into after school programs yes. and programs for the summer. Mm -hmm. We've got to do much better by our children because either we invest in our children now, like programs like Head Start, or we're going to pay dearly on the back end. Um, so I'm glad that we have a president who gets it. But Barack cannot, excuse me, I want to be careful to pay him due respect. President Obama yes. cannot do this by himself. That's right. It means that we all are going to have to do our part. And that begins at home. It, become, it begins <laughs> at home. It begins at home. If you're letting your kids get away with stuff that you know is not right, then we aren't, we aren't helping the situation. Well, I thank you so much for coming out and for being at the gala. Thank you. It's very fine as all. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you very much for having okay. me. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm going to check that book out. <laughs> yeah, I think you'll like the book. Yeah. Say what you mean to me, what you say.